the most effective way to manage COVID-19. Viral replication generally stops by ninth day, which means if you want any benefit of antiviral, it should be given within nine days. RT-PCR may be negative in late stages of infection, so don't forget to rely on clinical epidemiological and radiological guidance to diagnose a case. The best time for RT-PCR is after symptom onset on the 5th to 8th day. False negatives lowest in these days. The pathology of COVID disease is not the inflammation which causes the damage, not by the virus. COVID SLE, APLA, DID, and macrophage activation syndrome, HLH, are all similar. The host immune system reacts against its own tissues. Even CD changes occur a little late, but CRP and LDH are the first to raise. Clinically, the three dangerous symptoms are fever, myalgia, and exhaustion, which indicate high inflammation in the body. Steroids and anticoagulants are going to be the cornerstone of treatment. At present, steroids are recommended for people who become hypoxic. Start early steroid irrespective of hypoxia. If CRP and other inflammatory markers are elevated, Oral prednisolone 20 mg tablet per day or dexamethasone 4 mg tablet per day for 5 to 7 days will do the job if there are mild symptoms. Steroids will definitely make patients feel better. Steroids also prevent long-term lung fibrosis. Dexamethasone, a steroid, has reduced mortality in patients with severe COVID-19. It is an inexpensive and a commonly available drug. The use of this drug has shown improvement in survival among COVID-19 patients in the UK. It has reduced deaths of patients on ventilators by one-third and patients on oxygen by one-fifth. These observations were made in a clinical trial based in the UK called Randomized Evaluation of COVID-19 Therapy. There is a controversy regarding when to start anticoagulant. Better to start it early if city changes are seen as the changes in city are actually microvascular thrombi. A 
After 5 days, if disease course is stable, you can switch to oral anticoagulant, rivaroxaban, then milligram tablet once a day for 4 weeks. Preferable is inject methyl prednisolone 40 mg IV twice a day or three times a day based on weight and severity of hypoxia. Switch to oral dexamethasone once course of antiviral in this year is finished. Steroids may be needed for two to three weeks if hypoxia is present. It is preferable to prolong anticoagulant for six weeks if oxygen is needed. Fever or raised counts is marker of infection. Monitor counts procalcitonin to detect sepsis early. And keep a low threshold for antibiotic if patient received tocilizumab. Monitor CRP, the dimer, and other blood works needed every two to three days when patient is in the hospital. IL-6 or interleukin-6 on day 5 and day 8. Any race in IL-6 is a marker for an impending cytokine spore. IL-6 can return to normal with steroids and anticoagulant. Keep a low threshold for antibiotic if the patient receives tocilizumab. The most dangerous period is from 8 to 12 days, that is when most people die. There are rare reports of late cytokine storm after 12 days. But if treatment is started early as mentioned above, it is very unlikely patient will land up in complications. Don't forget dexamethasone is highly prodiabetic. So, even if sugars are normal in first week, keep monitoring blood sugars regularly as long as patients are on steroids. Prone ventilation for 18 hours a day will make a big difference if patient is hypoxic. No need to repeat CT chest after baseline unless patient has unexplained or sudden desaturation or worsening. Chest x-ray every three days is sufficient to monitor progress. Remember, radiological changes may take weeks or months to clear. Do not get panic. Remember, we are blood clots, not regular pneumonia. Improvement in oxygen levels is the marker for clinical improvement. No need to monitor anything else once oxygen starts improving. If tocilizumab is given, keep monitoring procalcitonin for a secondary infection and the risk of infection is present for, for the next two weeks. Once the silizumab is given patient, do not manifest fever or raised counts as marker of infection. Monitor counts procalcitonin to detect sepsis early. Keep a low threshold for antibiotic if patient receive the silizumab. Again, to reiterate, it is inflammation which kills, not the virus. Hit inflammation hard and early and be alive for two weeks. Body will automatically clear the virus after that. Ten to fifteen percent do not 
developed antibodies post COVID. The reason for it are probably some really don't develop antibodies or develop some B cell immunity or dominant IgA antibody response in respiratory mucosa and not systemic IgG response. So, post-COVID immunity passport is invalid.